Relations between the U.S. and China haven't been going so well lately, mainly because uh, China is ran by a dictator. And uh, props to uh, President Biden for calling him out. I'm sure the White House will walk it back. So according to Reuters, this is what Biden said. The reason why she got very upset in terms of when I shot the balloon down, which happened a few months ago, with two uh, boxes full of uh, spray equipment, is I didn't know it was there. That's a great embarrassment for dictators when they didn't know what happened. That wasn't supposed to uh, be going where it was. It was blown off course, allegedly. A spy balloon that got shot down. But of course, uh, China didn't like uh, President Biden's comments, saying that the remarks are absurd in a provocation in an unexpected role following efforts on both sides to lower tensions because the Secretary of State Blinken actually went to China a few days ago to try and you know ease things between our two countries in order to avert a Cold War, I guess a new Cold War between the U.S. and China. But I don't know if it went so well. They, they claim it went good, but then again, there's things that China would not stand down on, specifically revolved around Taiwan. They have ambitions on conquering Taiwan, and, well, we don't want them to invade Taiwan. We would like very much for Taiwan to remain an independent free country, as they should be. But President Xi has other plans. So I'm going to applaud President Biden in one of those rare occasions. I'm sure the White House will walk back Biden's claims, because in the past, uh, Biden has thrown out some hard truths. And uh, the White House has come out saying, well, the, the president didn't exactly mean it that way. Well, how else was he supposed to mean it and say it? But anyways, so props to uh, President Biden. Props to Jover. He's calling uh, she exactly what she is, a, a dictator. Look, the Chinese regime is not democratic. It's not about freedom or liberty. It's an oppressive one-party authoritarian system under the Chinese Communist Party, who has ruled over that country since the time of Mao. And the people of China have suffered because of the Communist Party in China. And most recently, we've had several instances occur where uh, Hong Kong, you know, they just wanted to be independent and free of China. But, you know, there was major crackdowns years ago regarding China. And then you had how they handled uh, the pandemic, even though the pandemic did originally come from a lab in Wuhan. Of, of course, it's not China's fault. They want to blame everybody else except for themselves for how the bug got out and started spreading across their country and how they failed to properly notify the rest of the world to give us additional time to prepare for it. And the way they treated their own citizens throughout the pandemic. There were a lot of horror stories that came out of China. And their death toll is ridiculous. They claim only a certain number of people died in uh, the pandemic. I doubt it. You especially have to go by the fact that this is where the disease first launched was in China. And that, you know, China's a huge country. And the percentage of those that died, according to the Chinese government, is far lower than in other countries. So I press X to doubt China on how many people allegedly died because of the bug in your nation or how many were killed by your own government because of the bug or are quarantined or, or put into camps. Speaking of camps, something else that uh, dictators like to do, the Uyghur population, the, the Muslims in the, I guess you could say, the eastern side of the country, a lot of them have been put into concentration camps over the years not exactly something you would see in, in a free democratic country. Okay, so that, that did happen in the United States with the uh, Japanese Americans in World War II, internment camps. But even though that's, that's an awful thing that occurred in our history, and we have since apologized to Japanese Americans for what happened to them in World War II, it's nothing compared to what's happened to the Uyghurs in those camps in China. Obviously something that dictators like to do, once again. And then let's talk about Taiwan. Like Taiwan wants to be a free, independent nation. 
But China just has trouble letting go and accepting that Taiwan should just be allowed to be free and independent. So they've had plans that they've been ramping up recently to invade China. And the government has, our government has spoken out against it. Biden has spoken out against it. Former Speaker Pelosi actually took a trip to Taiwan. And I think the current Speaker McCarthy met with the, the president of Taiwan when she was like, I, I don't know if she stopped in the U.S. too long, but I think they actually got a chance to meet. So overall, the stance of the United States government is, you know, Taiwan is a sovereign nation and we have agreements with Taiwan and we do not want China to invade Taiwan. And there's been ample warnings from the West and from the U.S. regarding China's ambitions. Only a dictator would invade another country like Putin, for example. Yeah, so... Okay, so going back once again, I have to backtrack. You know, we did invade uh, Iraq. So I don't know. But the, the point is, let's stay on topic with the present day. China is a dictatorship under a dictator. And she is a dictator. He can have the, the name president or president for life or, or head of the party or whatever titles he officially has. He can be voted by his own, uh, like, uh, Congress, the whatever their Congress is called. But all of them are part of the Communist Chinese Party. There's no rival party in China. I mean, we don't really have much of a political party system in the U.S. We have two awful parties, as I've mentioned before, the Republicans and Democrats. But at least there's some competition there. At least there's some differences between the two. I wish we had more political parties in office, but we don't. But at least it's not one party controlling everything. So that would be far worse in the United States if we had the Democrats in 100% control of all governments or the Republicans in 100% control of all the governments, like local, state, and federal. Fortunately, we don't have that. But in China, that's unfortunately the case. The Communist Chinese Party under Xi reigns supreme. And a lot of their people have suffered. The Uyghur population has suffered. The people of Hong Kong has suffered. The people throughout the uh, pandemic have suffered. And any form of like protest or free speech, which there is none in China, gets cracked down. So the people do speak out every now and then because they get fed up with the BS going on in their country. They will speak out, but... Then they get pursued and hunted down and arrested and disappeared by the Chinese government. And there's a lot of censorship on their uh, social medias. And their country is not a free country. Make no mistake. And under the Xi regime, you know, the dictatorship continues. And yeah, I mean, he's the current face of the Communist Party. And it didn't start with Xi. It started with Mao, and there have been a few others that have you know, come after Mao. Some may be a little better than Mao, some worse. But it's still a dictatorship. It just passes on from you know, one head to the next. Eventually, you know, Xi's time will come, and someone will rise to take his place. But they'll most likely continue the same policies of the Communist Chinese Party. Unless there's a major revolution in China where people finally get enough of how they're treated or mistreated or their lack of rights and freedoms. But the problem is you have generations of upbringing within the, the communist uh, Chinese party. And the youth has been indoctrinated over and over again. And there's definitely a huge percentage of the Chinese population that is loyal to the communist party. Not just out of fear, but because that's what they've been brought up to believe in. They believe in that their system of government is the best in the world and that all the other systems are broken or, or evil or wrong and that their way is right. So there's definitely those in uh, China who have that attitude. Now, there's also those in China that have a different attitude because they've been exposed to uh, the truth 
regarding their country. They've seen it with their own eyes, even if they're afraid to speak out on social media. But there's also a percentage of China that that would gladly fight and die for the Communist Chinese Party and for uh, President Xi. So you have that to contend with. But yes, China is very much a dictatorship. Unfortunately, that is a reality. So President Biden is correct when he calls Xi a dictator because he is a dictator. Make no mistake about that. And the fact that they are continuing to threaten a neighboring country like Taiwan with invasion is further proof. Because if China actually respected other countries' sovereignties like Taiwan's, they would work with Taiwan in the name of peace. They would accept that Taiwan doesn't want to be part of China and they would allow Taiwan to, to be free while at the same time working towards having good relations with them. The same can be said about Hong Kong. If they weren't a dictatorship, they would allow Hong Kong to be independent and then they could just still have like peace treaties, trade deals, etc. Diplomacy ruling the day instead of fear and intimidation and the iron fist of the Chinese Communist Party over Hong Kong, over the Uyghurs, and now over the people of Taiwan. Now I realize, as I said a moment ago, I know the United States is guilty of invading countries and so are other countries. And you know, Bush joked about being a dictator. He said, if, if I was a dictator, this would be a whole lot easier. But at the time, you know, the people were sold a bag of goods about Iraq, a lie regarding it having weapons of mass destruction and aiding Al-Qaeda after the 9-11 attacks. So we were led to falsely believe that China had some, I mean, that Iraq had something to do with 9-11 and with Al-Qaeda when that turned out not to be the case. But still an unjustified invasion by the U.S. So it's not just dictators guilty of it, just to correct myself there. But I feel like what China is doing is far worse than anything the U.S. has done. Now, the U.S. is far from perfect. We have our own set of flaws and we've had our own sins. And it's understandable why there's parts of the world that don't exactly like the U.S. But I feel like at least the U.S. tries to do good and promotes peace sometimes. <laughs> all right, so maybe not all the time. But, you know, like liberty and freedom and justice and equality. Those things I believe in. And even if the, the reality is we have long ways to go in all those uh, fields, at least we're trying to do better and trying to be better. Do you think that it's getting any better for the people of China when it comes to their rights and freedoms and liberties and justice and equality? No, it's not. I mean, case in point, does China look back in shame at the Tiananmen Square massacre? No, they've erased it from history in China. No one's allowed to mention what happened at Tiananmen Square. When several like peaceful protesters were mowed down by their own government. That did happen, China. You can tell your people all day long that it didn't happen, but the rest of the world already knows because we have it documented through interviews, through video, that the dude that was bravely standing in front of a tank. So we know that the Tiananmen Square Massacre happened, China. We know what's happened to people that practice Fall Gong and harvest or, and, you know, organ, I can't even talk, organ harvesting. We know about that. So yeah, China's very much a dictatorship. And it's unfortunate that we have any ties, our relations, our business with China. I wouldn't have a problem with having relations or business with them if they weren't a communist dictatorship who treated their people like crap and were threatening other nations and trying to coerce other nations. But unfortunately, superpowers are guilty of that. The United States is is guilty of their own push, I guess, their own agenda to shape the world into the, into our image. 
just like China is. But I feel like China's vision is far worse. It's like the, the devil, you know, because a lot of countries call us the great Satan. But I feel like we're, we're a lesser evil than what China's capable of being, specifically the communist Chinese regime under President Xi. So, yeah. Is she a dictator? Well, I'll let you decide. Let me know. Based off all the facts that we have regarding China in recent years, let's just keep it right there, right? Let's not worry about what China may have done during the early days of Mao, starving uh, huge percentages of the population, millions dead, and also people that protested against his regime mowed down. Let's, let's not talk about that. But what's happened in recent years in China? Like with how they handled the uh, pandemic and the lockdowns and the quarantines and you know the death toll, which is probably much higher than China claims it to be. The way pe the people of Hong Kong were treated, as well as the Uyghur populations and those that practice Fall Gong, and how they are aiming their sights on a potential invasion of Taiwan. And, and the way they... They treat some of their neighboring countries as well. And using North Korea as a, as a proxy, as a puppet. Because you're going to eventually have that occur. Because of the relations between North Korea and China. And yeah, it's a nice little puppet to have, I guess, in uh, Kim Jong-un. But yeah, China's a dictatorship. And look, I don't always agree with Biden. But here I do. He is right about Xi being a dictator. And uh, I'm sure the White House will walk back that claim. But what do you think? Do you agree with Biden for once? I mean, one of the rare occasions you might agree with him, or do you always agree with him? And uh, what do you think of his opinion about uh, President Xi being a dictator? Do you think he's uh, spot on? Do you think that uh, Joe is going to have to retract what he said? Or at the very least, the White House will, will retract it? And say, well, well, the president didn't mean that, what he said, <laughs> as usual. But, yeah, just want to make, a, I guess, a quick video, rambling a little bit, about, uh, yeah, China being a dictatorship and Biden being right about it. For once, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give President Biden that. He's not always right about things, but in this case, he most certainly is. Your thoughts, views, and opinions regarding uh President Xi being a dictator. As always, welcome below in the comment section.